Jennifer. David, you ready? Yep. Okay. Has anyone seen the movie Sideways or heard of the UFC fighter Chuck Liddell? Well, I'm from the central coast of California where they filmed the movie Sideways. And <coughs> so where Chuck Liddell lives and or is from and lives currently. It's a huge wine region with hundreds of vineyards and winemakers. Um, something that people do regularly there is go wine tasting. I've been going wine tasting for the past 10 years, and for five of those years, I worked at a restaurant that had a pretty strict wine policy. So I'd say I'm pretty savvy, and I would like to give you guys some basic pointers in case you ever wanted to explore the world of wine without feeling inadequate. For anybody who doesn't drink, it still might be useful information in case you ever wanted to participate in a conversation that people are having about wine. So, I will give you the basic knowledge of wine for three different situations. For your first situation, when at a tasting room, the bartender might ask you what kind of wines you prefer. If you have no idea, then tell them that. They're there not only to educate you on the products that they're selling, but also on wine in general. If the bartender is too busy, simply ask another customer. You should find that a tasting room is a pretty relaxed environment. But initially, choose wines that you're familiar with. Has anyone heard of Cabernet, Chardonnay, or Merlot? Okay, stick with those basics and you should feel more confident. Um, but if you already know what you like, this is a perfect opportunity to branch out and try new wines. Okay, now I'm gonna throw out some terms so that you know kind of what people are talking about. When the bartender pours your first taste, the proper way to hold a glass is bite its stem and swirl the wine. Unfortunately, this releases some of the alcohol, but it's also supposed to release some of the wine's natural aroma. Take a quick sniff to gain a first impression of the nose or fragrance of the wine, and then stick your nose into the glass to gain a second impression. Some familiar scents you might smell would be oak or citrus. Um, a direct indicator of the quality of the wine is the aroma, not the legs or tears, like we talked about last week, that's just a myth. Uh, mix again, and then taste. Take a small sip at first and swish it around your tongue. Some people can taste spices like cinnamon or honey or pepper. Um, another common term, the finish, is basically the same thing as the aftertaste of any other beverage. So for example, a Pinot Noir wine is a dry wine, and how you can tell is that it has a dry finish, which just means it leaves your mouth feeling dry, like cotton out. Sort of like mine is right now. <laughs> um, you also have the option of spitting the wine out. I don't know why people do this, you can't get drunk that way, so I'm not really sure. <laughs> Tom Stevenson, author of Wine 101, explains that in between tasting different wines or varietals, you'll want to cleanse your palate, and you can do this by eating crackers or drinking water, and most tasting rooms will have a supply of that there. Going wine tasting makes an excellent first date. Um, some of them have themes. I went to one one time where the tasting room was made out of a castle, like a castle, and every hour they would put on a show where knights would come out and joust. So they can be pretty fun. For a second situation, if you're out at a restaurant and you want to order wine, according to Lisa Buckley, wine buyer of the restaurant McClintock's, says um, to go with what you know, don't go with what's cheapest or most expensive. If you're dining with a date or business associates, of course you want to ask them, consult with them first, but if it's your decision, um, know that the general rule of wine is red wine with red meat and white <coughs> with white meat. Your server is gonna come to the table and do a very brief wine presentation. First thing they'll do is show you the bottle. This is just to make sure that this is actually the bottle you ordered. Just say okay. Second thing they'll do is open the bottle and then they'll present you with the cork. 
Another common myth is to take it and smell it, but don't do that. Just put it on the table, you don't do anything with it. Then they're gonna pour you a really small taste. When you're at a restaurant, just swirl once, sniff once, and take a drink. If it's not rotten, nod to your server so that they can go ahead and pour for the rest of the table. How you can tell if a wine is bad is it will smell and taste like wet cardboard or vinegar. Um, for your third situation, if you want to serve wine at home for a date or a party, um, there's a few rules that you can follow. When at a grocery store, a bottle in, under $10 is perfectly good. Buy a red, a white, and possibly a dessert wine for different guest preferences. Serving cheese and crackers is the ideal combination. Um, oh, serve wine slightly chilled, but reds at room temperature about 15 to 20 minutes before uh, or after it's open so that it has time to breathe. Always serve wine from a glass, never a cup. Pour into the center of the glass, not from the side like a beer. And the last rule I'm going to give you is, at all times, serve women and older folks first. If you want to know more about wine, there are plenty of books, magazines, online articles that will tell you anything and everything that you want to know. In the meantime, have fun with the learning experience and try not to be intimidated. Remember that the biggest wine experts and the, one who call the, the ones who call themselves wine connoisseurs oftentimes can't tell the difference between a good vintage and a bad one. And I would like to close with a quote from Benjamin Franklin. <coughs> wine makes daily living easier, less hurried, with fewer tensions and more tolerance. Thank you.